Welcome back to The Sim. In this video, we're picking up after the GMA350, getting it set up inside of SPAD.next. And what we're doing is we're just flying around Ottawa and having a look at the audio panel and what it adds to the immersion effect. All right, let's jump inside and look at the configuration. When you look at the SR22 that we're using as our example, we've got our GMA 350 from Real Sim Gear set up. And what's nice is the buttons, they're all made of rubber, it's great. There's a bunch of LEDs which we link in the SPAD.next software. Uh, if you don't have SPAD.next, I guess you could run their default uh, software, um, but this allows us to configure it, so I prefer it. Now, all the buttons are rubber, really nice. The knobs uh, are the same as the ones on the 750. So there is texture here, which is nice. Uh, I wish there was texture on the outer knob. So as you can see, we can map the knob in the SIM to the volume knob in the SIM. We've got our nav controllers. So being able to listen in and you get the identifier, you get the LEDs mapped. The only thing that's unfortunate is the only LEDs are NAV2, NAV1, COM2, COM1, the marker, the outer, middle, and inner marker, mic1, and mic2. The rest of the buttons, which are fully configurable, so you can map these buttons, but those don't have actual LEDs present. So there is no LED behind it. Uh, it does have the triangle that looks similar to the ghosted triangle, but it's not there. The only other issue I find with it is there's LED bleed. So behind the panel, um, they're not using any type of LED light pipe or blocking it so that the light from the adjacent uh, LEDs that are close Ottawa, by aren't coming radio, through. And as you can see, we're picking up With the ADIS. So let's go back to mic one and let's turn that off so we stop getting the ATIS. So let's jump into SPAD.next and look at how uh, we set it up and programmed each of the LEDs and each of the buttons. Now, before we turn off the panel, uh, I want to show you one of my favorite features is about SPAD.next is the Lego block. So right here, you can enable disable programming mode. So what this will do is every time you touch a button somewhere on one of your controls, right, it's going to go ahead Engaging autopilot. and it's going to move to that surface when you press a button. Similar, if I press a button here, it's going to move over and show us our real sim gear panel. So a lot of times I'll use that when I'm trying to find buttons on devices that don't have the GUI. But as you can see, the GMA350 has the GUI. Uh, it followed along. So I'm now going to disable that. And let's go ahead and we'll get into programming all of the pieces. As you move the mouse cursor, it will highlight to show you that it's programmable. Hence, here are your LEDs and no LEDs anywhere here. If I want to add something to a button, I simply click on the button and then you go about adding events in the same normal way. Button pressed, button released. So with real sim gear panels, the options you have are button pressed, button released. On the encoder, you're going to find that you have events for the button. So the knob itself has a push button and then you have a dual concentric encoder. So an outer knob, so tuner outer, tuner inner. So inner knob, outer knob that you can program events to. So when we were looking at the SIM and trying to map these events, we simply went in and there's two ways of figuring it out. One is you just kind of search for things that you think will make sense, like volume, and you can find it, or you can use the event monitor so that when I start my event monitor and I'll hit stop real quick so I'll get rid of those 
Now, if I go inside of the sim and I move that audio panel knob, I can see that I'm increasing and decreasing the volume control using audio panel volume ink. Audio panel volume ink. And it's incrementing pretty much all we did there. We just added the event, went to tuner inner clockwise. We added an action. We wanted to send a simulation event. And when we look up audio, you'll find there are the Microsoft Flight Sim events. And there for volume, we see that we can audio panel volume increase and decrease. So we just added that event and we clicked OK and we left it as the default zero. That was it. That's what got us our volume increase event. With the speaker button, we had the exact same way of doing things. We headed over to our event monitor. Go ahead and undock it for now. In the sim, we pressed the speaker button. We saw that speaker was connected to toggle speaker. So we add an event button pressed, add action, send simulation event, and then I just searched for speaker, and sure enough, there is our toggle speaker event. And it gives us the exact same capability, toggling the speaker on and off. And again, because this is a toggle button, it works perfect and stays in sync with the sim. For our marker button, we did the exact same thing. In the sim, we press the marker button and we see that was the toggle command. We did the exact same thing, send sim event, toggle marker. Now for the LED, because this one does have an active LED, for the LEDs, we looked for a similar type event. How do we find the marker LED? So you click on the LED, you add an event, and your events are change button light or assign a scripted event. So here, we wanted to assign an event for the LED button light. And you always have to add a condition. So the condition was how we looked for the data that we wanted to track. So we came in here, again, we did a search for marker and marker sound came up and you'll notice it sees a value of one because in the sim right now we're getting a value of one because the LED is on. So we grab that and we said when it equals one it will run this event. And so we clicked on add action right and button light mode, right? So you can control other devices as well based on this event, but we're controlling this specific device, which has LEDs on it. And then we picked LED four because that's what this LED is. It's LED four, which it auto populates. And then with a one, we were saying we want to change the light to on. And then you're given the option of permanent, so solid on, flashing in two second, one second intervals and half a second, or just flashing once. In this case, we're going to use permanent on. So there you go. Now we've got our events for the LED. And we would have deleted the default action that was already there. So we're going to go ahead and cancel because we already assigned these. So then I added the second event and it was real simple because again, once you add the event, it starts off by auto assigning the LED for you. So if we had no events, so we'll take our, our nav two and these are the nav two sounds, right? So say I set up the first one real easy. There's the nav one sound, right? If I copy this of all events, from this LED and I go to the next one and I paste them. You'll notice it keeps the same condition, but now it 
it auto incremented or in this case decremented to LED zeros to the first LED. So this was another easy way of this is going to set that config. Now I just needed to come in and I'm looking for nav sound two to be what drives this. Click OK. Come into this one. Double click on it. Change it to nav sound two. Click OK and away we go. So let's go ahead and let's delete these events and let's also just build it from scratch. So we're going to change the button light and see it auto populated that LED for us. So I know that what I'm looking for is the nav sound. Now it popped up right away, but if I had searched for nav, right, it would find all of the variables and LVARs and everything that involves nav. So that was one way to look for it and eventually you would find it. But let's instead change to searching for sound. So by changing it to sound and searching for sounds, it comes up a lot quicker to find that item because there's fewer going to be provided in the list. So I can see that my nav sounds, my marker sound, my DME sound, my ADF sound, these all show up as available items and data to map to. Now the other benefit is if in your sim you're toggling the data, right? When we look at the nav sound data, and we come back in, you'll see that that is now a one. So again, tracking the data to try to figure out what the right one is can be done with the data monitor. And you could go in and map a bunch of these variables to try to figure out when pressing buttons in the cockpit which ones are or which ones aren't the ones you're looking for. You can also exit, come back in, and these booleans will tend to update. So I can also see that now it's a current one, uh, which is what we were looking for. So we're going to use nav sound 2. And when it equals 0, then it's going to be off. So we're going to go ahead, click OK. And now we want to add our on condition. Now this will generally open up to the last thing we were on, which was nav sound two. We're now going to set that to a one. And now we're going to configure our LED. And in this case, we want it to turn it on and the mode is permanent mode. So now we've got that LED set. And as you can see, it toggles on the LED when the LED is on and it tracks. So whether it's in the sim, so if we go and we press the button in the sim, LED goes on, press it again, LED goes off. So perfect working in full conjunction and everything is awesome. Now for the markers, we did something a little bit different. So the markers generally will flash at you. So in the sim, this is the O, the M, and the I on the panel. You'll also see it in the G1000s. So this is when you're over the outer marker, when you're over the middle marker, and when you're over the inner marker, uh, these will flash. And to simulate that, what we did was we track the marker. So the marker Boolean will go to a one, but by default, the sim flashes the O or the panel flashes the O. So we use the exact same approach. When the outer marker is equal to zero, we turn off. So outer marker equals zero, config is off. When the outer marker equals one, we configure to flash for five seconds. So that will give us, or every basically it'll flash on flash off, flash on, flash off at a hundred or at 500 milliseconds. So this works great. Get the flash looks nice. Then we just copied 
all events. We went to the middle, we pasted, and then we just selected on the middle marker, right? So we were on the outer, so we just searched for marker, and then we found our outer, our middle, and our inner. You've got your mic transmit selects, for the LED for that, you've got COM transmit. So you can track a zero and a one for the COM transmit. For the COM listen, you have COM receive. Is it a one or a zero, right? And so you can send the event. And here we use the select event because of the way the SIM worked with the selector. Here we were using that it would check the data value of if it's set to a one when it's pressed, then you can set the select because you have to send parameters. So in this case, we actually have to use the parameter value. So it needs to check if it's a one, it needs when we're toggling it to set it to a zero because the toggle doesn't work, but you want to end processing so that that way when it finds it and sets it to zero, it wouldn't then run the next event. It would have end processing on that check. Now, if it is a zero, it's gonna check this one first. It's going to not form any functions, so it doesn't end the processing. Then it runs this event, and because it does run, it then ends the processing. So no matter what, our COM2 will always trigger the select properly. So for COM select, same thing. When you're setting the receive select, uh, there wasn't a toggle command. You have to s use the select and a zero will turn it off. A one will turn it on. With the com transmit, you press the select and that's the one it's going to do. Parameter, it's just gonna fire that that's the selected one. There is no turning it off or on because when you select com two, it switches that event to com two. So that just works. With the nav, it's the ident toggle. So you got your VOR ident toggles. Those will turn them on and all of the LEDs track uh, according to the same process. You got your receives and you've got your transmits. Now all these other buttons, uh, you can find lots of things I'm sure that you wanna add in your SIM to these buttons. Uh, the only other one that made sense to me uh, might be wanting to set the ADF or the DME um, though the DME is coming from either VOR1 or VOR2 nav radio 1 nav radio 2 so it's not a separate device uh, in in the sim they're using a much older audio panel uh, where your DME could have been a separate receiving device Pretty straightforward, easy to configure this for the standard default aircraft that come with the SIM. Uh, we'll do another video where we start trying to map these uh, to say the CRJ, which has LVARs that it uses for the audio panel. As always, if you like the video, uh, press that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along next time when we'll be doing something in Microsoft Flight Sim. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.